Hello everybody, my name is Caitlin. I am a student at Washita Baptist University and today I'm going to be showing you some simple ways to mimic hypoxia conditions for cell research. Here's an overview of what the video is going to be talking about. If you're looking for a specific part, you can skip to that now or you can continue watching from the beginning. The rapid proliferation of cancer cells and tumors causes them to outgrow their surrounding vasculature, resulting in a drop in oxygen levels. These conditions are called hypoxia. The severity and level of hypoxia from tumors varies depending on the type of cell and the location in the body. So be sure to do research on your cell line before starting experiments involving hypoxia. Generally, the hypoxia range is about one to 2% oxygen. Testing cancer cells under hypoxia allows researchers to better mimic the actual conditions in which cancer cells grow. Exposing cells to acute or short-term hypoxia induces gene pathways that increase proliferation, angiogenesis, metastasis, and resistance to chemotherapy, among other factors. Testing cells after they have been under hypoxia is the best way to get an accurate idea of how the cells will behave in vivo. There are several different methods of inducing hypoxia, including some that use chemicals. In this video, we are going to go over two methods of creating hypoxic environments for cells. The first is a simpler, cheaper option that involves vacuum packing the cells as pictured on the left. The second is a more advanced and costly method using a hypoxia chamber as pictured on the right. Both will be explained in the following video, starting with the simple vacuum packer. The vacuum packer method is easy and low cost. This method is good for those doing research without access to a standard hypoxia chamber. Most of these materials are easy to obtain. The materials used here were standard store-bought vacuum packer essentials. As you prepare to create hypoxia for your cells, gather all your materials. First, this is the vacuum packer. Familiarize yourself with how it works and where to insert the materials. These are the oxygen absorbers. They come individually packed. These are filled with iron powder to help absorb excess oxygen. For each plate we pack, we use two oxygen absorbers. These are the vacuum sealable bags designed for the vacuum packer. Some come as individual bags that can be sealed on one side, and some come in rolls to be cut to the desired length and are sealed on both sides. To monitor general oxygen levels, we use these oxygen indicator dots. Sometimes they come individually packed and sometimes they come packed in groups. When we are finished, we always reseal the bag. Here's a closer look at the mechanism of the oxygen indicator dots. I held up the sealed bag with red dots inside where there was low oxygen, and one outside the bag that was blue indicating oxygen is present. Keep in mind these indicators usually do not change color instantly. This may vary depending on the kind that you buy, but for us, it took a few hours for them to change to red color after they had been vacuum packed. So do not worry if they don't change color instantly. There are alternative ways to measure the oxygen concentration. We sometimes use the oxygen indicator dots to get a general idea of the oxygen concentration, but we also use this meter shown here, which gives more precise readings. It measures the percent oxygen by volume in the air surrounding it. And lastly, of course, you'll need the cells that you want to treat, including any other materials needed for cell culture. Here's a list of all the materials we just went over. Once your materials are gathered and you are ready to do the hypoxia treatment, grab your plate, flask, or whatever container your cells are in from the incubator. Here, I am quickly labeling the vacuum bag with my name, the date, and the name of the test. This six-well plate I'm about to pack has my seeded cells and media that contains heaps of buffer additive. Carefully place the cells inside a vacuum packer bag with the oxygen absorbers and oxygen indicators. I placed one oxygen absorber on the bottom, then my plate, then another oxygen absorber on top, and lastly, an oxygen indicator dot. Now that my cells are in the bag and ready to go, I am setting up my vacuum sealer. I plug it in, I open it. Take note that your vacuum sealer may be like mine, which has a vacuum and seal option at the top and just a seal option at the bottom. You wanna make sure you place your bag in far enough to reach the vacuum and seal option. Making sure to keep your bag upright, move it to the vacuum packer so that the top that needs to be sealed sits in the vacuum and seal part. Press down on the top of the vacuum packer and hold it down. For my vacuum packer, after you hold it down, it will automatically switch to hands-free mode and seal the rest of it for you. 
which is why I hold it down for a second and then I let it go and it finishes vacuum packing on its own. When it is done, the ceiling light goes off. I press cancel and it pops open and I carefully take my bag out of the vacuum sealer. As one last precaution, I made sure that the bag looked completely vacuum packed and sealed and there were no open edges or places where oxygen could get in. Then I placed them back in the incubator. When deciding how long you want to treat your cells under hypoxia, remember the limits of hypoxia treatment in 2D cell culture. Cells can't last forever under hypoxia, but we do want to treat them with hypoxia long enough to induce the genes or produce the desired outcomes we're looking for but not so long that the cells become overly stressed and die. Based on the research you did into your cell line, you might come up with an idea of how long you wanna treat your cells for. For our recent experiments, we've been treating our A549 cells under hypoxia for about four hours because we're looking to induce HIF1 alpha expression, which peaks at about four hours. Here's my well plate after four hours in the incubator. You can see the oxygen indicator dot turned red, so I know that my experiment was performed correctly. Now, we will move on to a second method of creating a hypoxic environment for cell culture. This involves using a hypoxia chamber. A hypoxia incubator chamber is a sealed container that creates a low oxygen environment for cells. The hypoxia chamber shown in the video, and the one that we use, is from Stem Cell Technologies. For a more in-depth explanation of working and purging the hypoxia chamber, see their website for videos and other supplemental materials. Before starting, let's familiarize ourselves with the parts of the chamber and how to assemble and disassemble it. Here, you can see an overview of what our hypoxia chamber looks like when it's set up. We are going to create a hypoxic environment inside of the hypoxia chamber by purging it with the cells inside. Let's start by disassembling our hypoxia chamber so we can put our cells inside. The blue ring that goes along the circumference of the hypoxia chamber is the O-ring. There's a lever on the side that you can pull open to extend the O-ring or snap shut to close it. Remove the lid from the hypoxia chamber. You can see that there are three trays. You may not need all three. In this case, I'm only using one because I only have one six well plate to place in the hypoxia chamber. An optional small dish of water can also be placed in the bottom of the chamber to avoid excessive evaporation. I place my cells in the bottom of the hypoxia chamber. I'm also going to add an oxygen indicator dot. This is one of the ways that you can assess general oxygen levels. The dots change color based on their exposure to oxygen, as talked about in the first half of the video in the vacuum packer method protocol. As I place the lid on top of the hypoxia chamber, I'm checking to make sure everything sits correctly. If it is sitting incorrectly, the seal may not form properly. I open the O-ring, place it around the hypoxia chamber, and push the lever on the side in to snap it shut and secure it. Again, I'm checking to make sure everything looks like it's placed on correctly. There are two tubes coming out of the side of the hypoxia chamber with white clips. Open these clips by pushing back on them like you see me do, or close them by pushing down to secure them. Now that I have my cells in the hypoxia chamber and the lid is securely shut, I'm going to connect one of the tubes coming out of the side of the hypoxia chamber to a gas source. Our hypoxia chamber came with tubing that provided us a filter and this additional PSI meter. I connect the tube from our gas source to one of the tubes coming out of the side of the hypoxia chamber. The other tube has nothing attached to it. It is where the gas will come out. Both my clips are open so gas can flow freely through the chamber. Here you can see the tubing that connects the hypoxia chamber to our gas source. The best gas to use for hypoxia conditions is a mixed gas made of 94% nitrogen, 5% CO2, and about 1% oxygen. Every setup for a gas source may look slightly different. We already have ours preset to 20 PSI, which is the pressure you want to maintain when purging the hypoxia chamber. All I have to do is turn the knob on the top of the gas tank open and then switch this lever down to allow the flow of gas out. This knob on the front also controls the pressure if I need to adjust it. As you carefully watch the pressure, purge the hypoxia chamber for four minutes at 20 PSI. This out tube should have a flow of gas that you can feel coming out of it. After I have allowed the gas to purge the hypoxia chamber for four minutes, I turn off the gas source, 
come over to the hypoxia chamber and push both the white clips on the two tubes shut so that they are securely shut and no gas is coming in or out of the chamber. I can then disconnect the hypoxia chamber from the tube connecting it to the gas source so I can place it in the incubator. Now I have successfully purged the hypoxia chamber and sealed it off with my cells inside. I can take the hypoxia chamber and place in the incubator for a set amount of time. Again, based on your cells and your experimental needs, your time under hypoxia may vary. Four hours might be a good place to start. If you're planning on using this hypoxia protocol video in conjunction with another experiment, for example, a scratch assay, you can see other cell block protocols to help guide you in a successful experiment.